Hey wonderful photographers, in this video I'm going to review Topaz Photo AI 3 using it as a plugin with Lightroom Classic and Capture One Pro. So let's get started. So this photo I have in front of me, I took it at the Toronto Profusion Expo a few weeks ago. You can see I took it with a JPEG instead of a, a DNG or a RAW file. It's a 3 by 4000 pixels and if I press I the keyboard shortcut I on my Lightroom Classic, you can see I took it with the iPhone 12, as well as some of the meta information or the EXIF information of my camera settings. Anyways, with this photo, it looks fine when you're looking at it at a normal view or when it's in fit view, but once I zoom in, you can see it looks pixelated. So what I'm gonna first do is let's try to turn this into a portrait. So I'm going to turn it or I'm going to crop it and I'm going to make the crop squeezed in. It's not a great crop or a composition masterpiece but it'll serve our purpose so that looks fine. So one thing I can try to do is I can try to recover some of the detail in the detail panel in Lightroom Classic so I can increase the sharpening, mess around with the radius of the pixels as well as try to add some detail. But as you can see, as I'm adjusting these detail settings or the sharpening, it still looks a little bit pixelated while I'm zoomed in. And I'm just gonna press the keyboard shortcut I as well. And since I cropped it, it decreased the image size. So one other thing I can do is I can add some masking to the image. Right now I'm pressing Option or Alt option on my Mac while I'm scrolling this masking key or this masking slider to show the masking or show where the sharpening is applied. And even then it still looks pixelated. So what I'll do is I'll just reset the sharpening here and I'll take this photo into Photo AI 3 by right clicking with my mouse and then going to edit in and selecting Topaz Photo AI. The color space, I'll just keep it at sRGB or change it to that. And I'll edit a copy with Lightroom Adjustments. And then I'll click Edit. So now you can see Photo AI, it already applied some automatic adjustments. So this is the before image, which looks pixelated. And this is the after image. And it looks a lot better or it's a lot more, or it's improved, I should say and it automatically applied some correction to this image. It applied recover faces, it took a low quality photo and recovered the faces and it also upscaled it by four times to about three by 3000 pixels. So these settings were automatically applied because I have Topaz Photo AI on autopilot. If I go to the settings or the preferences and go to autopilot, I can turn off autopilot if I want to, but I'll just cancel out of it. So you can see the image looks pretty good now. One thing I can do now is improve the image. So you can see Photo AI is recommending some more settings to apply, or I can add my own setting or my own enhancement right here. So I'll just go, here it says sharpen. It also recommends sharpen, I'll click on it. And with the sharpening tool, it's a trial and error. You gotta play around with some of these AI models. So if I go to, let's say strong here, it's processing, so it has a check mark, so it's been processed. It looks good. Sometimes you can't even notice the before and after change. So it is a slight improvement while I click on this eye tool right here to hide the sharpening effect. I'll just turn it back on. I'll increase the strength. And it's very difficult to see on this screen, but I do notice some changes. It's a slight improvement. But what I found for the portraits is natural is the best for this photo. One thing you got to keep in mind is with the sharpening, especially with this portrait, you can see it did an okay job with the face here, but it kind of messed up the skin here or on the body it kind of pixelated it here so you can see right here 
and here it looks fine it's smooth but here it looks a little bit disoriented or messed up so what i'm going to do is i'm going to go to natural and i was saying natural is i think a little bit better and i'll decrease the strength and i'll decrease the minor denoise see how that looks i still don't like how this skin actually looks so let me go back to standard decrease the strength okay so that looks better so actually standard is the best in this case the other tools or the other enhancements that it has is like balance color or adjust lighting you can see what it does but for most of the time you don't need to apply these settings for i'll just adjust lighting right now just to give you an example i mean that looks pretty cool actually but i should decrease the strength or increase it a little bit more put it down to four put it up to 14 actually so it gave a little bit of a nice natural color grade to it but I'm going to just X out of this or remove it. I'll also show you the balance color. This is just pretty much balancing the white balance, in my opinion. And you can play around with it and change the opacity. But I will just X out of this. So the main tools you'll be using with Photo AI 3, I think, is usually like the sharpen, the upscale, and the noise reduction if there's a lot of noise in your image. The other tools such as balance cover or adjust lighting, they're not usually required. You can correct these in your local photography software using masking. And anyways, so this photo looks a lot more improved. There are a few more adjustments I can make such as like this necklace here. You can see it's, you can see it in focus here, but it's a little bit hard to see right here. So what I can do is put it back in Lightroom and clean it up or remove it. Same thing with this earring here. It's hard to see where it's being pierced, which is fine. That's an issue with the photo, not Photo AI 3. But I'll export this back into Adobe Lightroom Classic by clicking right here. So it'll just take a few seconds to process. So here I have my TIFF file and it looks like it's having a problem with the thumbnail showing. So this is the JPEG and this is the thumbnail. So, okay, so the thumbnail has been processed or rendered. But anyways, I'm going to just make some minor adjustments to this photo. So I'm going to go to the heal tool, click on the brush. Sorry, that's the masking tool. The heal tool is right here. Click on the brush. I don't need generative AI and I can just make a few adjustments to this, even if I don't really need to. And that looks a lot better. And what I can do is I can add some basic adjustments or some basic lighting. So I'll mess with the lighting here by putting some contrast, putting some clarity. Just make the image look a little bit better. I don't need more saturation or anything like that. And then what I can do is just give the classic vignette Go to the effects, decrease it. This image looks a lot better. So I'll press the keyboard shortcut key or the C, the letter C to compare these two photos. And you can see here, this is the photo I took into Photo AI. I increased or upscaled it and then added some pixels to it and sharpened it and then made some final adjustments in Lightroom Classic. And this is the pixelated photo. So what do you guys think of this portrait that was pretty quick to process and improve in Photo AI 3 as well as Lightroom Classic? Now we'll take a look at Capture One Pro. So I'm just going to go to Capture One. So this photo I took of a parrot in Cuba several years ago with my Canon Rebel T5i. It was my first camera system. And... You can see I messed up with the uh, camera settings. If you look right here, it's at 6400 ISO, 1 one hundredth of a second shutter speed and aperture at 5.6. I think I was shooting at aperture priority at that time, learning HDR photography, so I forgot to not use aperture priority. 
If I go to the library, you can see it was shot at aperture priority. And here are the exposure or EXIF settings. And it was shot with the Canon Rebel T5i. And it shows the software as Adobe Photoshop Lightroom because this is a DNG file. So that's a file, that's an Adobe file, but I converted it to DNG for my Canon CR2 file. So anyways, going back to this, you can see a lot of the noise in the image here, mainly in the background, but some in the foreground. I can try to remove the noise here in Capture One Pro. You can see it automatically applies some noise reduction. If I decrease it to zero, that's how it looks. And if I increase it to 100, that's how it looks. So it's not much of an improvement or it's negligible. So I'll just reset this. And what I'll do is I'll take it into Topaz Photo AI3. Click there. And I'll keep it on sRGB and the rest look fine. So I'll click on edit variants or edit a copy and now it's going to open up in topaz photo ai3 here's the before image and here's the after so it automatically applied some noise reduction which looks fine to me i'll just keep it at these settings here i'll zoom out of this image and see how it looks in the background so the noise reduction is pretty amazing in Topaz Photo AI 3. And let's zoom in actually. Let's see if I need any sharpening. So I'll go to sharpen. It might be a little bit hard to sharpen this image because a lot of it of the parrot is out of focus. So let's do lens blur actually. Lens blur version 2. Let's see how it looks. So it brought a little bit detail of some of the feather that's in the foreground, but not all of it. So what I think I'll do is just to make this photo look a little bit more consistent. You can see it's sharp here, but out of focus here. That's just the bokeh effect. I think what I'll do is I'll just decrease the strength because the sharpness on the bird looks okay. Actually, it could be a little bit sharper. Let me see what happens if I go to a strength of 87. No, that doesn't look good. I'll just keep it at 40. What I can do is I can try to add some clarity or contrast to this part of the image just to make it look a little bit more sharp. So this looks good to me now, or that's the best Photo AI 3 can do, but it's a lot better than what I was able to do in Capture One Pro with the noise reduction. So I'll export this back into Capture One. And this is the normal file. And this is the new TIFF file of Capture One. So it looks a lot better. And what I'll start with is I don't want to mess around with the background. So I'm going to select this bird here. I'm going to, the, I'm going to go to the masking tool. I'm going to select AI select. I'm going to click right here. So it should be selected. Let me see the mask. Okay. Never display. And actually one thing I didn't do was actually, oh, that's a good thing. So Capture One automatically created my mask. So now I can play around with the layer better. So here it is right here. I'm going to go to the basic, no, actually, yeah, the basic color editor. I'm going to increase some of this beak information right here. So I'll increase the saturation. Doesn't look like it's doing anything. So maybe it's the yellow. We'll increase the saturation. So it's barely, it's barely noticeable, but it did increase it. Let me turn off the mask. Okay. Oh, why is this mask showing? Never display, display selection points. Actually, I need to click on this, the select tool. That looks better. Okay, so I increased the saturation a little bit of the beak. 
Now I'll go back to the red, increase the saturation right there, and a little bit of the green. And let me go back to the orange, see if that made a difference. Yeah, it did make a difference, the orange. Now, one thing I need to correct is the exposure, which I should have done at the beginning, but I will go and make sure I have, this, have the right mask selected. So I have the regular image layer. And now I'm going to go to the highlights tool and the white tool to correct the highlights here, as well as the blacks and the, sh and the shadows. So let me first decrease the blacks, move that histogram to the left, move the shadow to the left. Yeah, so it can't recover all the color scale or the the entire range, unfortunately. I would have to do some advanced layer and masking, but that's fine. And let me take a look at the whites. Let me increase it or decrease it actually, and then decrease the highlights. Actually, no, that doesn't look good. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reset this high dynamic range. I'm gonna go back to the mask here and then I'll decrease the highlights here a little bit. Decrease the whites. So that looks better. Let's see the before and after. Before and after. By the way, I'm pressing Option or Alt, clicking on this Reset button to show the before or after. Now let me increase the highlights. Actually, that looks good. That looks okay. Now I can just add a, actually I need, I want to add some clarity to this and contrast. So I'm going to go right here, add a little bit of contrast, add a little bit of clarity, a little bit of structure, just to give it a better sharpening look. This still looks so blown out. So let me decrease it a little bit. I mean, that's okay. This is the best I can do with this overblown photo. And now I'll just add a vignette to this image. Just a slight one. Okay. So what I'll do is right click with my mouse. I'll select set as compare variant. And with this photo, I will select this. So this is the Topaz Photo AI3 photo, which looks a lot better than the original photo with the so i did the noise reductioning and a little bit of sharpening and then some fine adjusting unfortunately i wasn't able to recover any of this detail uh, i would have to do some advanced masking and uh, layering to get that corrected but anyways what do you guys think of this final photo i took with my blown out parrot in uh, cuba do you think photo ai3 is good uh, leave a comment below and if you guys enjoyed this video you know what to do and as always, live easy, sleep breezy, and stay lovely.